Can everyone hear me okay? Loud and clear, Tammy. Thank you. All right, tonight's meeting is an informational meeting about the Arizona um, AHO travel management plan in AHO and around that area of BLM lands. And what I'm going to do now is ask the team that is with us tonight from the state office to introduce themselves. And I'm gonna start with Jeff Walsh. Hi, I'm Jeff Walsh. I better put on my video, Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Jeff Walsh. I'm, I'm the, for, for, for this uh, TMP, I'm gonna be covering uh, concerns about lands of wilderness characteristics and um, uh, special status wildlife species or overall wildlife concerns. Sharice? Good evening, my name is Sharice Flatt and I am the GIS specialist on this project, which means uh, data and maps. Lane? Hi, I'm Lane Calver. I'm a realty specialist at our state office in Phoenix and um, specializing or dealing with lands and realty issues in the context of this travel management plan. Thank you, Matt. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Basham, and I'm the state archaeologist out of the BLM Arizona State Office. And for this project, I will be responsible for uh, Section 106 compliance with the National Historic Preservation Act as well as uh, tribal relations. Thank you. Doug? Good, good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Whitbeck. I'm the rangeland program lead for BLM Arizona. So that means I'll be covering livestock grazing and vegetation. Keenan? Hi, I'm Keenan Murray. I'm a geologist with the state office. I do mineral materials and leasables, and I'll be working on any of the mining related issues on this travel management plan. Nancy? Hi, hey, everybody. My name is Nancy Favor. I'm a planning and environmental specialist at the Arizona State Office, and I'll be assisting with NEPA compliance for this project. Thank you. And also joining us tonight. We have a contractor that is helping with the paperwork and the route evaluations, writing EAs, things like that. And joining us from the contractor is Cam. Hi, everybody. Cameron Gale. And uh, like Tammy said, I'm here uh, to assist the team through this travel planning process. All right. So. Again, I just wanted everybody to introduce themselves so you knew who they were. Ground rules for tonight are pretty easy. We just ask that everybody respect each other. Your mics will be muted during the presentation, and we will unmute them when we get to the comment portion. You can use the um, chat area to ask questions, and um, you can also then later we'll show you how to put your comments in and submit them through the BLM's e-planning website or by um, sending them in. And the e-planning website tells you that also. So we're gonna look at the maps today and the goals of this, the process that we use, try and keep things from moving, and ways to comment and then get your questions and concerns. This is the map of the area. The yellow portion of this map is all BLM land. This is Ajo right here. And that area, you guys probably know better than most of us on this call. So that's why we're asking for your help tonight. 
the background of travel management is that we go out and we look at each of these routes, we get an inventory of them, and then we get sit down and review and evaluate them with an entire team of specialists who you've met tonight. And then we designate them as either open, limited to a certain vehicle type, to a certain time frame, et cetera, or closed to a form of or a designated route network. What we're going to be asking you tonight to do is to look at these 385 miles of inventory routes over the next few days and tell us if we missed any. That's going to be our biggest challenge is getting you to tell us if we missed any of these routes. This explains open, limited, and closed. An open route is recommended, open for all modes of transportation and uses. A route that is recommended for limited use can be limited by travel mode, user, or season of use. And a closed route is closed permanently to public use. And it is actually generally reclaimed. Barriers may be installed, signs may be placed up, vegetation may be put into it, things like that. So we ultimately designate a network of routes through this process to ensure that you guys have a clear understanding of what you can use on the ground and how to use it. Where we are tonight is information gathering. This is not a NEPA pro part of the entire NEPA process. We are simply doing this up front so we make sure we have all the routes before we start the NEPA process. And here are the questions that we're going to ask you to answer for us. Are there actively used routes that are not shown on the inventory map? And that is the biggest question we have for you tonight. Okay, so if you don't get to any of these other questions, please answer that one. Do you see anything missing on these routes? And then if there are any resources in the area that a particular route affects, in other words, is there something out there that a route is either taking you to that you really enjoy or damaging something out there? And then the next question along the similar lines is, does a route provide a specific function for you or other people? Is it some place that you go for a specific reason? Does it lead to something that you need to get to, especially if you're a permittee or someone like that? You know, if you're using this route for business uses, we need to know that and what the business is so that we can make sure we have that in the record and take that into consideration. And is does a road give you a special function that we should consider? Again, it's a little bit of a twist on the um, question above, but it again gets to what do you use these routes for and how do you use them? Now, the next question is one that probably you guys can answer better than we can. And that's because you're out there on a more often basis than we are. So if you know that a particular road is too narrow or too rough for anything other than a specific vehicle, size vehicle, we need to know that. Even though we've had this route inventory done, you may have a particular knowledge of a route that we need to know that it narrows at a certain point or it's blocked at a certain point or something like that. And then what would you like us to consider during this route evaluation? What things would you like for us to consider? Is there something that you don't think we're going to think of with our specialists that we need to consider? And what is that criteria? Is it because I found out recently that there is an Ajo scenic loop? And Sharice can show you that on the map a little bit ago. So that, or in a little bit, that's going to be, you know, something that I think you guys are going to want to make sure that all of those routes are on the map. So if you know of things like that, tell us that and tell us what's in that scenic loop that everybody should be able to see. And that goes down to the last question, again, of the route evaluation criteria. If you know of something that we should consider, maybe you know there's a special plant 
or animal out there that we haven't seen yet, or maybe you want us to take into consideration and you want us to consider that during this time. I am now going to turn the meeting over to Sharice so that she can show you how to actually submit public comments on these questions or anything else that you want to talk to us about. Sharice, you want to take this away? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Let's see here. Let me make sure that I select the right thing. All right, is that coming through okay for you all? Yes, it is. All right, great. Like Tammy said, um, I'm gonna walk through how to access the comments at through ePlanning and then um, also show you just a little bit on how to use the web map product to help facilitate just kind of your research um, and kind of spot checking to see if we have included all of the routes and some ways to submit data if you have it. Um, and then again, also, also submitting comments. Um, so this is the e-planning site. I'm sure we will give you this link um, if you don't have it already from the news release. Uh, but this is the, the page in e-planning and you can access the comments by going to participate now and then clicking this green button here again of participating now. And this is the actual comment form. Um, and so you can provide general comments, of course, um, but this is where I'll get to the map. Um, and I'm actually gonna back out of this. And you can access the map here under participate now. And actually any of these tabs here has the link. Just make sure that you're clicking on the story map uh, link to view the inventoried routes. I'm not gonna click it now because I already have it open, um, but it will load this product here. Um, and what you'll do is you'll, you'll scroll down and this provides just an overview of the project that we've already really talked through um, this evening. And you'll keep scrolling down to access the, the web app. And you can interact here on this screen. You can do some clicking around, but if you want the full functionality, what you'll do is click this um, kind of box with an arrow to, to load the full, the full screen and the full functionality. And I'll talk through just a little bit on how to navigate this and you know, utilize all the tools available here that we've, we've made available to you. Um, the first thing is clicking this information or the I button. And this is gonna give a description of how to use all of these widgets or tools, um, which I'll talk through right now. But if, if you forget, the instructions are right there and hopefully that's helpful. Um, we can view a variety of different data sets. The, the main one of interest, of course, is the actual route inventory. Uh, and this layer list will allow you to turn on and off various layers. Again, the main uh, layer of interest to you all, I'm sure, is the route inventory. And in this map, we can zoom in, zoom out, and click on different features. And I'll circle back to this in a moment, but on the route inventory, we have data in here showing the route segment ID, and if it's in a wash and the length of the route. Um, it's also symbolized if by if it's a, a route, a blocked route, or a reclaiming route. Um, and I'm sure if you have questions about that, Tammy or Cam can speak more to those classifications. Um, this route ID number is something to note. And this is the way I, if you have a specific comment about on a specific route, reference that route segment ID number in your comment so that we know which route exactly you're talking about. So otherwise, in the map, we have a few other layers like Tammy referenced. We have already received a couple of public submissions, including the El Camino del Diablo, uh, which you can see here in orange, and also the Ajo Scenic Loop. So that is there for your reference. Um, no need to submit again, we, we have that information. Uh, we also have a couple of other layers just for reference that are really kind of our, some of our special management units from the most recent uh, resource management plan in the area, including um, areas of, envir of critical environmental concern or ACECs because we love our acronyms, uh, the Gunsight Wash area, 
and special recreation management area, and also the areas that are managed to protect wilderness characteristics. So you can, you're able to toggle those data sets on and off as you'd like. I'm gonna go just through a couple of other quick buttons um, and then turn it back over to Tammy, but uh, there are a couple other tools here. Right now we have the imagery base map here, but you can change it to any others if, if that's helpful for reference information. Also have the measure tool if you're not, if you're like, man, I, I really think that there's something a quarter mile away from this intersection. Uh, you can use this tool to kind of help with those kinds of questions that you might have. Uh, we also have a coordinate conversion. If you, if you go out and have a GPS unit or even using your cell phone and you drop a coordinate and you wanna know where you were, this will help plot it on, on the map. And it has various different uh, coordinate formats. Finally, if you are someone who um, will go out with your own Garmin and collect some GPX track files, you can load it up using this add data button and using file. The caveat here is that it is it will draw on this map, but it will not save it to this map. So it's really just for a way, a way for you to look and see if it lines up with what we already have. If it doesn't, and you have additional data in GPX format that you wanna to give to us, please send it to our email address, which I'm sure we will show at some point today. Um, so that's the only caveat. It will draw on here, but it will not get to us by just drawing it on the map. I hope that all makes sense. So again, kind of tying it back to how to submit a comment, utilize this web map, zoom in, zoom out, click on the routes, record these route segment IDs, come back to e-planning, use that segment ID for your comment if you have something specific uh, about a specific route and uh, submit comments. I hope I covered everything. Tammy, uh, is there anything that I left out? Not that I know of. Is Does anyone have a, a question at this point? If you do, unmute yourself and please ask the question. Does everyone understand how to utilize this mapping and everything to send your comments in? All right, we will go on with the presentation then. All right, I will stop sharing. Thanks, Tammy. All right, I'm going to share my screen again. This um, Dolores put in the um, chat the link. This is also the link here on the bottom that will get you into where Sharice was showing you how to make comments and everything. So if any of you need to see that, you can do that. And the address is again up here at the top and down here at the bottom. And I'm basically gonna be going through the same thing for just a minute that Sharice did. Make sure that you understand, you go to the participate now tab, put your comments in, make sure you give us your information up here and make sure that you're using the um, route ID if there's a particular route that you want us to pay attention to. That's the end of the presentation. Does anyone have any questions for any of us? Just unmute yourself and ask your question. Are there any concerns by anyone? Tammy? Yes. Uh, Ted Werner, uh, would you put the uh, address to uh, access that uh, segment also, or again? I got yeah. bit.ly slash BLM, and I missed the last part of it. Okay, it is in your chat. Dolores shared it for you. You see it in the chat there? If you not, I can. Chat? 
Oh, yes, I see it there. Okay, it's right Thank here. you. Thank you. You're welcome. And then if you need to email something, if you don't want to send something in, she's also put the email address for you to send stuff in. Make sure you're including contact information on all of this so that if we have a question, you know, we can actually contact you and find out what you were actually referring to. I know all of us think we write really well and we explain things really well, but sometimes when someone else reads it, they don't understand exactly what you're asking or what you're trying to get across to us. So we may need to get in contact with you, especially if you're finding a route that we don't have on the list and in that inventory. We will especially need to get a hold of you to get information about it and things like that. So make sure you have that in there. Are there any other questions? Yeah, this is Roger McManus. Um, um, thank you for this so far. It's um, I'm sure some people will find it easier than others, but um, uh, just a general question in this in this area. Um, what is the um, what is your presence there? Do you have anybody who's assigned to that area or are or, or regularly in contact or in the area? Or I guess the reason to ask that question is, is depending on what people kind of comments they make may depend well on whether there's a anticipation that you have bodies that that um, uh, can uh, be available for any management issues once you decide on the management program. Well, our Lower Sonoran Field Office manages this area and they are always have someone available to answer any questions once this is completed. Right now, while we're going through this process, you would contact this team that you've met tonight um, for any questions. But once it's completed, you would contact the Lower Sonoran Field Office. We also have law enforcement that does patrol the area. I know he's out there at least a couple of times a week, if not more. So we do have people in the area as best we can. Does that answer your question well enough, Roger? Uh, yes, ma'am, it does. Um, um, so I, I assume when the plan is made available or is completed, um, then the Lower Sonoran Field Office will be uh, the point of contact on any uh, uh, management issues that emerge or questions that the public has or what have you. Yes. Um, as we go through this plan now and um, do a draft environmental assessment, we will send it out to the public and you will contact the team that's here tonight with any questions you have on that. And then once it's completed and signed, it will go back to the Lower Sonoran Field Office. Any other questions? Well, I, I guess one of the issues to know from you guys, if you've uh, gotten to that point, is uh, what are your priority concerns in doing this review? Um, um, I mean, besides the fact that it's good that you're doing it and, and, uh, and always timely, are there uh, particular issues or concerns that are driving the review at this time? Well, actually, we could go through each of the specialists and let you know the particular things that each of them has, but that's really what we're trying to ask you guys tonight is what concerns you may have to add to their list. Of course, we have concerns about wildlife. We have concerns about um, usage or misusage. We have concerns about camping and you know all kinds of recreational issues. We have concerns about um, cultural issues things like that. We take, that's why we have such a large team looking at this is because each of the specialist concerns and ideas are taken into um, consideration as we look at these routes. 
And then we come up with a route inventory or a route evaluation process that we go through that um, Cam and his company are helping us with. And once we get ideas of where people should go and how they should be on those routes, meaning what vehicles they should use, then we bring that back out to you guys and say, okay, what do you think of what we came up with? So if you have concerns now that you want us to consider during that process, because we're going to do what I call zooming in and zooming out. We're going to look at each individual route, and then we're going to look at how it fits into the bigger picture of the entire area. And as we do that, we will narrow down which routes um, and how we're going to deal with each one. So um, I, <laughs> I, I'm looking uh, at all the colleagues here who may want to comment, but I guess one thing that could be raised at this point is that uh, we're seeing a lot more um, um, public activity and camping on public lands in this region, um, not traditional, not just traditional um, uh, camping uh, for short periods of time by people on holiday or what have you, but people who are basically establishing uh, uh, residences to some degree or another. And um, um, would be curious going into this comment period, what kinds of uh, considerations has the department been uh, thinking about for this plan in that regard? This area is like most BLM areas and you're only allowed to camp for 14 days. So especially if any of you know where people are camping longer than that, it could be our winter visitors, it could be visitors from the South, it could be anybody. We would really appreciate knowing that so that we can get out and take a look at it and see what we can do to remedy that situation. The area that's called um, gun site is an area that they hope to build into a better camping area in the future. So you can look that up on the map and view that. And you know, like I said, anything that you're aware of that you don't think is good for this area please let us know. If you find things that are good for the area too, especially different routes, different areas that you think are really good for camping, let us know of those as well. Hunting, fishing, I don't think there's any lakes in here, so I doubt that fishing's going to apply. But you know, any of those things that you can think of that you do in this area or you know others do and enjoy, and you know approximately where you don't have to give us their favorite hunting site or their favorite camping site, but you know a general area, you can give us a general area of where they enjoy those things, then we can put that into the route evaluation information and utilize that as we're going through here. Any other questions? I want to emphasize that it really is important that we get as much information from you guys about how this area is used and how you like to use it in particular so that we can take that into consideration. Is there anything that we missed telling you tonight that you would have liked to have talked about? One consideration um, would be, and given the fact that these areas are being, uh, pro being used and will probably be more used in the future, is uh, to what degree um, or, and how would you be in a position to uh, establish what roads are available or not available and how would the public be um, um, uh, able to uh, find that out and how would they get information about that once you're out there? 
once as we're going through this plan, we will do a draft EA that will show you what we considered and what plan we came up with on how to utilize each route, whether it's open, limited for some reason, or closed. And you guys can comment at that time again. You can tell us, you know, hey, this looks great, or oops, you missed something over here, or hey, why did you do this? I don't understand. Um, tell, explain to me why you left this as limited or something like that, especially if we get, and limited a lot of times is limited to the um, size of a vehicle based on the road size, like I mentioned earlier. So you will have an opportunity to give us more feedback later when we get to that stage and help us understand what you think of the plan that we're suggesting. And then once this is completed, there will be maps available and things like that. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, you actually just answered it, Tammy. So, so this effort right now is an administrative designation of routes as either you know open, limited, or closed. And then after that process is finalized. Um, maps will be produced and available at the Lower Sonora Field Office, um, at the Arizona State Office, and I believe also on the internet, GIS, correct, uh, Charisse and Tammy? Yes, yes that's correct. And, and there will be, in some cases, signage actually out on the, on the ground as well. Roger. Are you considering some kind of permit process? We aren't doing any permit process through the travel management plan, but is there something that you think should be permitted out there? Not offhand. I'm just wondering if you're you're thinking about uh, people requiring a permit to use to be on no. the road in that area. Okay. No, not at all. That is not under consideration at this time. Anyone else? Please don't be shy. All right, I will ask um, if all of you do understand how to get into the e-planning page to send us your comments. If not, please let us know so that we can show you again how to do that. Do we need any more time tonight? Is anybody thinking about something they want to ask or anything like that? Hearing no other, no other comments, I'm going to close the meeting out now, and I want to thank everybody for coming. It's really important for us to get your comments and to get your opinions on what's going on out there and how we can best utilize that information to make these route evaluation decisions. So please take the time to tell other people if they haven't been notified and let them know there is another meeting tomorrow night. Again, at five o'clock, it is the same meeting we did tonight. So, you know, you don't have to come a second night in a row unless you really enjoyed looking at us tonight and wanting to hear from us again. But um, there is another meeting tomorrow night, the same exact meeting, like I said. So if you know anyone that you think should be 
in these meetings, please ask them to come to the meeting tomorrow night at five o'clock. And with that, if nobody has any other questions, I'll close the meeting out. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you.